What is up, y'all? How's it going? Happy Friday. I'm excited to be talking to you today. And I will be going over this book, The Power of Vision. Okay. I'm over here on Facebook and Instagram. And it is good. It is good. It is good. Because this book answers the question of like, why am I on this earth? Like, why am I on this planet? What am I doing here? Why am I here? And I posted this book on both my Instagram story and my personal Facebook page. And y'all went crazy. Y'all went crazy about this book and talking about it. And I'm like, okay, we're going we're gonna to talk about it. We're going to talk about the power of vision. We are going to talk about um, some of the principles, some of the aspects that Dr. Miles talks about in this book, because they are game changers. Okay. If you're over here on Facebook and you're watching live, tell me hello, say hi in the chat. Um, if you do say who you're like, who it is. Cause I can't see your name. Cause I'm trying out stream yard. Like, you know, trying to be fancy over here, like go on like multiple different platforms at once. So if you're commenting, say your name as well. So that way I get to see you. Um, and I can see what's going on. Okay. Because yes, without vision, people perish. That is truth. That is truth. That is truth. Okay. <clears throat> Deja, what girlfriend? I saw that comment and I was like, I bet it's Deja. I bet it is Deja. And I was correct. What is up, girl? Deja is incredible. She is running for um, county commissioner, right? In um, Collier County. Good to see you tomorrow. I hope was thinking about you tomorrow and I'm excited. Okay. So um, Deja knows this training as well. So I'm like, oh, it's going to be like, it's putting my education, seeing how much I'm listening because she knows this training. Okay. So I got introduced to Dr. Miles um, actually a couple years ago uh, by one of my friends who was a large fan of Dr. Miles because Dr. Miles is absolutely incredible. And I got um, started investing in his trainings, listening to what he had um, a couple months ago. Was it January, February? Around February, I started like diving into Dr. Miles. And this, these trainings, what he is teaching is something that I had never, I had never heard of before. I had never heard of before. And the way that he taught it, I was like, holy cow, how is this not being taught by more people? How are more people not understanding this concept, this vision, all of it, because it is so so incredibly good. And the way that he teaches and the way that he talks about it, I'm like, I grew up in the church and I have never heard, I've never heard it be taught like this. And I'm like, I, ha I have to have more. I need more. I need more of this and this teaching because it talks about faith and what we're doing and vision and life. And it's not just that we're here waiting to die. Because that's literally what I thought for so long. Anybody else? Anybody else think like, why am I on this planet? Like, I'm just kind of like hanging out until I die. But he talks about it and he's like, no, you have a purpose. You have a purpose. You have a reason. You have a passion that you were here on this earth and it is good. And so that's really what we're going to talk about today. And so I'm about a quarter of the way done with this book right now. And let, like, I just got to show y'all some of like the pages. Oh, the cover's falling off. We're just going to, we're just going to remove this really quick. Okay. Like literally there's so many pages in here where I'm like circling and I'm like highlighting everything. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so good. We got some underlines here. Okay. And so I want to share this with y'all and I want to be able to share some of what I have learned and hopefully it'll help somebody else. Okay. Uh, there was a while where I was going live every Friday morning um, and I was actually reading the Bible and it was amazing and I loved it. And right now we're pausing. We're starting in September. And I'm like, wait, I miss my Friday morning Bible reading calls. I miss them. I want to jump back on. So this is essentially what we're doing. Okay. Um, oh, my disco ball turned on. All right, Facebook. I can't, I can't um, move you around. But look, you can see my disco ball. I got disco ball light bulbs. Yes, that is a thing. And uh, for some reason it got turned on. So Alexa, turn off living room. Okay. Did anybody else's Alexa just turn on? Because that would be funny. Uh, cancel. I'm good. I don't need anything. All right. So the power of vision, the power of vision, really one of the main things that it talks about is why do you exist? Why are you on this planet? Okay. And I feel like that's a lot of the question that like anybody's asking. You're asking the question of why am I here? Why do I exist? 
what does this mean? What does it look like? Because at the end of the day, we don't just want to exist just to exist. We want to exist with a purpose. We want to know that we are doing something. I believe that so much of the world is sad and depressed and anxious and everything else because they're simply going to a job and they don't understand why they're going to the job. They're showing up for this corporate job. They're showing up, they're sitting in an office and it's like, I'm literally just pushing a widget through. I am literally just showing up and I'm getting paid for something, but I don't know why I'm here. Okay. I think that almost everybody has asked the question. Let me know in the chat if this is you of why am I here? What am I doing here? What's my purpose? Because when you have a purpose, when you have a vision, when you have a calling, when you have a reason, that's when you wake up in the morning and it's like, I got it. Like I can do this. I know why I'm here. I know what I'm doing. You wake up with new energy and new purpose. Does anybody remember when you would wake up on your birthday as a kid and you were like, it's my birthday. It's the best day ever. Oh my gosh. And you have this passion and you have this vision and this excitement. Maybe it was Christmas, Christmas morning energy. I remember the night before my sister and I, we would always spend it. Like we would always sleep in the same room because my grandma would have my room. So I'd go and we had bunk beds growing up. And like Liz and I were so excited. We were so excited. We're like, tomorrow morning's Christmas. We couldn't go to sleep. We were like, oh my gosh, it's happening. We had that vision. We had the vision of, oh, what was Santa going to bring us in the morning? What was the next morning going to look like? Hey, what were we going to get? We had the vision, okay? What if we have the vision for longer than just Christmas morning, than just our birthday morning, all right? That is what this book goes over, the passion and the purpose of vision, okay? So why do you exist? What are you doing here? First of all, um, who has ever asked that question, okay? Ask the question of, hey, what am I doing here? And I believe that it's a God-given gift that each and every one of us have on what it is that we're doing. On Instagram right now, my Naples mom is watching. What is up? Lisa was in the Dominican Republic, and she got to build uh, water filtration services for people. Okay. That was a vision that she had that she literally got to do. It came true. She got to give people clean water. Okay. So what is your vision? Why are, why do you exist? And Dr. Miles said something in this book that I absolutely love. And he said, the poorest person in the world is the one without a dream. The poorest person in the world is one without a dream. I was like, wow. That's such an eye opener of the poorest person in the world is the one without a dream. And it's like, what are you dreaming for? What are you believing for? That's part of the reason why uh, my program, I call it dreamers and action takers, because I believe that the people who dream big and the ones who take actions are the ones who truly win. Those are the ones who show up. Those are the ones who win because they're able to see, hey, what is it that's possible? What is it that I can do? They have the vision. They have the dream. They're grabbing onto it. They're like, no, this is what I'm doing. This is how I wake up in the morning. And I'm like, yes, I'm here. I'm I am ready. I want to go out and do the thing, even though I got like three hours of sleep. It doesn't matter because I have my vision. I have my dream. I don't have time to just mindlessly scroll on social media. I don't have time to waste because I know what my dream is. So the people who can dream big, the people who know what it is, their vision, why they are here, why they're existing on this planet, and then they're taking action on it. Like, oh, that is an award winning combination. Come on, somebody. All right. So the poorest person in the world is the one without a dream. Okay, so um, on page 31 of this book, look, literally like so many highlights. One of the things that it talks about is how the vision gives purpose and excitement. Okay, so what will your vision give you? Yes, so many times your vision will give you the aspect of being able to help other people. And majority of the time it will and it should help other people, but it also gives you that passion. Okay, and so one of the things that um, Dr. Miles said in this book is it was paraphrased from John Stuart Mill. And it says one person with vision is greater than the passive force of 99 people who are merely interested in doing or becoming something merely interested, having that contradiction between going out and having the fire and just merely being interested. Like that person who's just showing up to the job just because they're getting paid. Cause they know they have to pay their bills because at the end of the month rent is due that difference of both of them. One of the things that Lisa just said is like, don't wait until you have it all together. Just take the step of faith, like Peter getting out in the boat. Yes. Being able to take that step of faith, being able to take that step of faith and truly going because you know that you're covered. Oh, I love this analogy. Okay. So one of my coaches gave me this analogy a couple of months ago when I was like, I don't know, like, I'm kind of scared. I'm making these moves, but like, I don't know how it's going to go. Like I'm nervous. Okay. And she gave me this vision of, she was like, have you ever been to the circus? And I was like, actually, my family used to own a circus. 
So like fun fact, I don't know if that surprises anybody. Everybody who I've told that my family used to own a circus, they're like, honestly, it checks out. And I'm like, I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing that it checks out. Like, I don't, I don't really know how to take it, but I'm choosing to say that, that, you know, it's a good thing. Anyways, my family owned a circus and my great aunt and great uncle, um, I think it's two greats were trapeze artists. And actually this ring that I wear every day, it was my aunt Mary, who was the trapeze artist and it, she traveled all around the world. And so if you've ever seen a trapeze artist, maybe you've seen greatest showman, whatever it is, you know, that the trapeze artists actually don't have anything to be afraid of because there's a net under them. We may not be paying attention to be able to see the net, but the trapeze artist knows. They already know they have the net. They know, oh, if I fall, I have the net below me. And they even practice falling. They practice falling. They take the time to actually fall into the net so that they know what it feels like. So that they know what it is like to be able to fall and they know that they're not going to get hurt because our brain's like, nope, like that's far. Nope, I can't take that step out. I can't step out of the boat. I can't do something more. Like, that's a far fall. I'm going to hurt myself. But it's like, no, 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 no. You have a net. You have a net. And so being able to have the passion, the vision to be somebody who is just that one step in front and not be a part of the passive force of 99. Because you have the net. You know that nothing's going to happen. And your brain even may maybe going like, oh yeah, but like, what about this? I lost my business. Hey, this happened. This happened. Yeah, but you're still alive. You still made it through. You still continued to show up and to talk to people, even though that happened. And it's like, oh, there's so much more available to you. There's, excuse me. I'm like talking so fast. I'm like, oh my gosh, I spit. Anyways, that's gross. Okay. It goes on, Dr. Miles goes on to say, most people have an interest in their destinies, but they have no passion or drive to fulfill them. They don't really believe the dreams God has put in their hearts. And if they do believe them, they don't do the things that will take them in the direction of fulfilling them. This separates the people who make an impact in the world versus those who just exist on this planet. Like, wow, wow. The ones who are willing to show up with their passion, with their vision, are the ones who make a difference on this planet versus the ones who are simply existing. The ones who are simply existing. And it's like taking the step out in faith and taking the step out and actually doing the thing that you're scared of. Okay. I'm going to share about it like this way, because I think that this is a great example of like what's going on and all of the above. All right. So um, currently I'm live on Facebook and on Instagram. Okay. Currently I have zero people watching live, zero people watching live. All right. I talk to so many people and they're like, I can't go live. Like nobody's going to watch. I can't go live. Like people aren't going to pay attention. Who cares? Who cares if nobody watches your first live? The only time it gets frustrating is when you believe that that's the season that you're always going to be in. But when you know you have the purpose, when you know you have the passion, you know that these are a necessary step in order to get where you want to go. You know that you're going to continue to show up live. You're going to do it because there will be people who show up. Maybe it's the fifth one. Maybe it's the 10th one. Maybe it's the hundredth one. Okay. And if you get to a point where it's like, it's still not working, you've been consistent, you've done a hundred, 200, 300. Hey, continue to tweak it, continue to change. Hey, maybe you need to market it more. Maybe you need to market it differently. Maybe you're not showing people what they're going to get from listening to you. Maybe people don't understand. But so many times it's like, hey, what are the things that will take you in the direction of your dreams? What are the things that will allow you to show up? A lot of it's showing up live even when there's nobody watching. A lot of it's going and starting the YouTube channel even though you know you're going to start with zero. Y'all. I started a YouTube channel a couple months ago. Apparently I haven't done a good job advertising it because I talked to my mom this week and she was like, I didn't know you had a YouTube channel. And I'm like, oh, all right. Well, I haven't done a good job advertising it. All right. The YouTube channel. Um, yesterday, Wednesday. Wednesday I had 19 subscribers on my YouTube channel. All right. Been posting some shorts on there. It's been going great. I got three new subscribers yesterday. Okay. Up to 21 subscribers on YouTube. But it's knowing that I have to hit 21 before I'm going to hit 100. It's knowing the fact that 20 comes before 100. 100 comes before 1,000. 1,000 comes before 100,000. So show up anyways. Show up and do the things that are tedious and small. And it's like, 
I don't know how this is going to work. I don't know how this is going to look, but I'm going to do it anyways, because I know that it can't, that this is the progression of what happens. I know that my vision is to help you share your dream with the world. And so I'm going to continue to show up and talk to an empty room until people come. Because I know when I'm speaking on stages around the world that I'm going to be like, oh, I've already been practicing. I've been practicing my speech. I can talk to a hundred people because I talk to an empty room. I can talk to a thousand people because I talk to an empty room. And I'm going to continue to show up for my message and my vision. So what is it that you need to do? What is it that you are missing out on that you haven't done yet? I actually saw this. Um, I actually saw this quote like circulating, circulating. I don't know. It was on Facebook recently. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just read this. And it was so cool. Okay. And it was Louis Armstrong who apparently I've never heard of him before, but apparently he's a super famous jazz musician. Okay. And one of the things that he said was, I know there's music in me and they can't keep it out. He became one of the most successful and beloved jazz musicians. Okay. And I believe that it was him as well, who he was playing in, like he sold out Carnegie Hall, like he sold out these huge venues, yet he was playing as a street performer and nobody paid him any attention. So while he could go and sell out these huge venues, he was like out on the street, not doing any, like not selling out anything. Okay. Like people weren't paying him any attention, even though he's one of the best musicians. And it's, hey, who are you around? What are they valuing you as? But still knowing that you inherently have value, you have a vision, you have a dream, all of it, okay? And one of the things that Dr. Miles says in this book, because I think that so many times we can get distracted. I was on a coaching call yesterday and one of my clients was saying, hey, I'm gonna go do this. Oh, I'm really excited. I'm gonna create another course. And I was like, all right, let's talk about this. Why? Why are you creating another course? She's like, because people are coming to me and like, they're not ready for my high ticket course. I was like, do you have a desire to help these people? And she was like, well, I mean, I can. I was like, that's not what I asked. My question was, do you have a desire to help these people? She's like, no, I believe wholeheartedly that people get the biggest transformation and the biggest change when they invest at a high level. We can work one-on-one because they have the commitment to themselves to be able to get a transformation. I was like, then why are you creating another program? Just because it's good doesn't mean it's great. It's a distraction right now. It's totally a distraction. She was like, you're right. I was like, yeah. I was like, you can totally do this. I was like, but we have also talked before and you have chosen. I didn't ask. I didn't tell her this. I asked her this. I got her to the point of realizing that she had created other courses and done other things as a distraction in the past. So I had seen it. And this is the value of a coach and a mentor because somebody else can see it, okay? And they can see what it is that you're working on and what you're doing. And I could give her that insight of like, you can absolutely do this, but this is not your passion. This is not your vision. This is not what you feel like you're called to do. So why are you doing it? Just like, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should, okay? One of the things Dr. Miles says is you should be so busy stirring up your gift that you don't have time to be jealous of anybody else or feel sorry for yourself. Okay. And she didn't say this, but she could feel sorry for herself that those people weren't a fit right now. She could feel sorry for herself of, oh my gosh, like, what does it look like? Like, why, why aren't, you know, how come people aren't wanting to join? How come people aren't wanting to do it with me? No, we don't have time for that. We do not have time for that. You have a vision. You have a calling. You have things that you were supposed to do. You have things that you're put on this earth to be able to do. And at the same time, you are not called to serve everybody. Somebody needs that word today and please write it down. You are not called to help everybody. I think that every single entrepreneur who I've talked to, especially at the beginning of their journey, they're like, I can help everyone. My favorite thing is like when I get on a consult with somebody and they're like, I was like, cool, who's your ideal client? Who do you want to work with? And they're like, I can help everybody. And I'm like, okay, yes. You can, that is not who you are called to help. And you do not want to help everybody. You do not want to help everybody, but who are you called to help? Who is your person? Who are your people? What does that look like? 
Figure out the people who, when you help them, you come alive. Their passion is there, the excitement. It's like tiredness does not have any effect on you. Who are those people? Okay? Look and see because you are not called to help everybody, but somebody is. What if by you trying to help this person, you are actually taking it away from the person who is called to help that person? What if at this point, it's not you helping everybody, but you're actually hindering somebody else from being able to step into their true calling and their true, true destiny because you are focused on, hey, I want to help everybody. I have to help everybody. But that was never what you were called to do. It was never what you were designed to do. You have one person you were called to help. One person. Focus on that person. Okay? And with that, you're going to need other people. You're going to need other people who are along the same vision, who are along the same lines as you. And those are your people who you get to run with. Those are your people. The amount of people and mentors and coaches who have come alongside me, who have helped me, who have guided me, who have shown me, who've had similar visions that we've been able to partner together with. Having people like joint ventures where I go in their group, they come in mine. We help our people because we have gift, different gifts and talents. One of my favorite examples of this is I am great at marketing. I'm great at marketing. I know marketing. I understand marketing. You can tell me a story. I'm like, hey, this is how you can use this for marketing. Okay. Sales. I know sales. I understand sales. I am not called to teach sales. I'm not called to teach it. I can but there are people who are called to teach sales. I was never supposed to teach sales. I can teach marketing and there's an aspect of marketing that has sales in it, but I'm not going to teach sales calls. I'm not going to train you on, Hey, this is how you close somebody. I'm not going to teach you on a script because I don't even use a script. I don't use a script. Okay. So who are the people who you are working with, who you are running with, who they can come alongside with you. So in that example, I have partnered with people who have the ability and the talent to be able to teach sales. That is a corporate vision because we want to help more people together. We want to help more people together. Okay. And the last thing that I want to talk about, because I got to go, um, is there are principles that are true in finding your vision and really doing anything. Okay. This book talks a lot about the principles. Okay. You want to see the cover power of vision. This book gives you the principles, it gives you the tools, it gives you these ways to show up. And I think that a lot of times we need the step-by-step -step until our skill advances enough where we can just use the principles and the principles are enough. And we don't actually need just the step-by-step -step because we understand the principles well enough. And it's like, oh yeah, I understand what's happening with this. One of my favorite examples is I used to go to a conference every six weeks, okay? I used to go, um, I was in college at the time, so I would take off college. I would do all my work before. Um, my college wasn't like, oh, you didn't really have to show up. It was like, if you skipped more than eight classes, you failed. And every single semester I skipped seven or eight. And I was like, right at the line. Anybody else? Like, you know where the line is and you get up right up to the line. Okay. There were a couple classes that I actually convinced my professors not to fail me because I skipped too many times. All right. Anybody else? See, I am good at sales. Anyways, principles. I would go to this conference and one of the things that happened at this conference is they would talk about how to sell. And a lot of it was around network marketing. Hey, how do you sell this product? How do you sell a physical product? How do you talk to people? All of that. And it was so fascinating to me because I would show up and I would do the aspects. I would do the things that I was taught. And then my skill increased enough where I understood the principle of what was being taught. I understood the principle, the value of it, and I could go and apply it to the industry that I was in. Because I was never in, never been in physical product sales. I've helped other people with it, but I've personally never been in physical product sales. I've always been with digital products, so either coaching or courses. And so I learned the principles. Your skill gets to increase when you learn the principles. These principles of vision can be applied to anybody. These principles of vision can be applied to anybody in any industry because we are all working towards something. So what is the vision that you are working towards? What is the thing that you know keeps you up in, at night? The thing that you know ex like excites you to a whole nother level? That you're like, I don't care. I don't care that I didn't get any sleep last night. It was a day last week um, where literally I think I got like 
maybe two hours of sleep and it wasn't for lack of trying, like barely got any sleep, but I was on five. It was a long day, had youth group that night. So it was with, was with the youths, which was amazing. Didn't get home till like 1130, been up basically since 2.30 that morning. But it was like my, I knew what my vision was. I knew what I was doing both with youth and with the, with my business. So what is your vision? Okay. Deja said at the beginning of this, without vision, people perish. Without vision, people perish. What is it that you're working towards? Why is it that you have to work on this? There's so many people who have joined. um, And I know some of what y'all's visions are. And it's been so cool to be able to see and to know, hey, this, these are the things that you're working towards. Okay. Write it down, make it plain. Because then it makes it really easy to know, is this in line with my vision? No. All right, cool. I'm not doing it. And you're not like that client who I talked to you about, who was all distracted. You know what your vision is. You know what you're working towards. What is up, Trina Holden? How are you, beautiful? <clears throat> got so excited. Voice cracked. All right. I got to go. I got to go. Meeting a friend. Very excited about it. This was super fun. It's live on Facebook, live on Instagram. Like we're going double time over here. Working smarter, not harder. Because you know, you know that's what I'm about. I just found another app that will allow me to work smarter, not harder. Hello. It's amazing. Okay. So. Y'all are incredible. Without vision, people perish. I'm very excited to hear more about your vision. Send me a message. If you watch this and you're like, either I don't know what my vision is or I absolutely know what my vision is, either way, or maybe I think that I do, send me a message. I would love to hear about it and celebrate it with you. Absolutely love celebrating with you. Okay? So hope you have a great rest of your day. Uh, We're going to do a little air horn action and enjoy your Friday. And I will see y'all next week.